Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is David. I'm I'm your acting Take Two Radio host, um, subbing for Pam, who is under the weather. And with me tonight, I have my men. Will, are you there? Oh, yeah. Hola, amigos. Hey, everybody. It's great to be back. It's great to have you back. Anthony, are you back in? Anthony is with us. I guess he stepped away. And we're going to have Candace join us as soon as she can. But to start it off, I want... I was reading some good news, and that was, I guess it was from Michael Fairman's, um, Michael Fairman's article that um, Days of Our Lives had really good. Um, turnout with Peacock and its two increments that were placed on there from uh, Beyond Salem and A Very Salem Christmas that it got it got the um, steam rolling in the ABC area and I I'm not sure of the name um, who's in charge? Um, that escapes me right now. But they, he seems to be open to more um, derivatives for General Hospital. If I said that correctly. Yeah, for Pine Valley and General. I'm sorry, I'm back. I, I had a we have work getting done on the fence in the back, and, and that was a contractor. I had to take that call. Oh. Sorry, everyone. This is Anthony. Welcome to um to blog to blog talk to uh, take two radio soaps. Um, yeah, they're you wanna... they're they're, in, they're interested in other iterations of General Hospital. Um, and in fact, there was um there was talk about night shift. Um, and folks might remember Night Shift was a general hospital iteration that went on SoapNet back when that was still a full-fledged network. Yeah. So it's a, possi- it's a possibility. I'd love to see them resurrect Poor Charles personally. but um, I love that. It, yeah, Poor Charles and Night Shift are both to be missed. Yeah. yeah. Candice, what do you think? And, um, Hello, everybody. Hello, honey. <laughs> Hello. Hey. I, you know hey, what? I, hey, I would like, well, you guys already know where I stand at with all of this. I, I think they should bring back the city in the sense of you can actually have a melting pot of characters. You could. Uh, for general hospital purpose. I mean, I think we got spoiled with the rebirth of Port Charles in the sense of the, you know, the 13 week arc, which actually worked. Yeah. <clears throat> take note some other shows. Um I wouldn't mind it, but I don't know. But then again I liked it nice shift. Thought that was pretty cool too. They could bring that back. I don't know. And I the fact that they dropped night shift in, in um in that conversation, 
you know, leads me to believe that, they, you, you know, that A, they're definitely jealous of the success from Peacock and Beyond Salem, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But, um, you know, maybe, you know, the success of Night Shift, it was, that was also a little bit ahead of its time. It um, was. Yeah. It was. I mean, I, I, just I that's why I keep thinking. bringing uh, like Christina into the spotlight and kind of focus on the, <laughs> the next generation. I think that would be really cool. I I've been begging and pleading to the soap heavens above to some. That's why I kind of said like you know the city because I mean again if you guys were fans of you know loving and then it morphed into the city. The city was more so for I guess for the. It would be for the Gen Z, um, you know, fan base, because I always said that it could, uh, you could take some of the characters from General Hospital, like the younger set. Like, you could have Molly and TJ, you know, along with, oh, God, who else would probably, then, like, Lucas. Like, take some of that and morph it into their own show. Um, you could without, even bring Michael. You know, I know people you would have like Michael it, but over there. Good. Yeah, I mean, you, you could, could have, have Michael, Michael cross over there. Over there. Yeah, yes. I mean, that's why, like, to me, it would have been a great idea. I've always said that um, because, <sighs> so, I, I see, mean, if they, they, they have to get out of the Alex- world. Go ahead. They flirted with Alexis being um, a possibly a potential professor. They could they could bring over Alexis, another core legacy character, and all of the younger set and open up Port Charles University. Bum, bum, mm-hmm. bum, bum. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They could. Well, the possibilities they could. are endless. Possibilities yeah. are endless. I mean, we could have Morgan so, come back if they, like, if they brought Morgan back. Um, no. In a certain way. No, we're not, we're not, we're could, not doing that. No. Mm-mm. No. No, no, no. No. Yeah, Morgan, no. No, Morgan, Morgan is, he is in, in soap heaven with his penguins. Penguins. <laughs> Penguins, in case y'all was forgetting that Morgan loved penguins. Penguins! Every time I see a penguin, I'm like, miss you, Morgan. Mm -hmm. Stay up in soap heaven. Thank you. (laughs) No offense to the the, the fans who liked it, Mike, who liked it, Morgan. I did, too, but it's just, you know, sometimes you can't bring everybody back. No, you know, and, and we... I mean, let's let's do a quick informal poll amongst you know us right here. Who really believes Luke's dad? <laughs> I don't. Oh, I don't buy it for a second. Anyone buy it for a second? No. <laughs> I, I nope. Exactly. Wait, hold on. Wait, let, wait. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do like half of so uh, the so fandoms, including the mainstream ones that have posted the article. So ask me that question again. I'm going to pretend to do this. I'm going to do this justice. Okay, and ask me again. Ask me again as a serious journalist, you know, host of a soap show. Ask me for my opinion about, like, like do that, okay? This is our audition Candace. for, like, Young and Russell. Yes. Candace, <laughs> yeah. you know, we have been seeing some really great tear-jerking performances by some of the legacy characters and even some of the younger characters over the death of iconic Luke Spencer. Do you <sighs> really think that he is actually dead? I mean, it would be a travesty. Um, to know what this character brought to uh, this iconic show, you know, um, they still have the highest-rated wedding of all time. 41 years ago, they mm-hmm. had the highest rated freaking wedding. Princess yes. Diana. Princess Diana sent a bottle of champagne over to them. They had lunch boxes. Yep. They had like what why why would they do this? Why would they kill off a character that brought so much joy? And sorrow. Why? Sorrow. And sorrow. To the, to, this is why the genre is sinking, folks. This is why you killing off iconic characters. You don't know what to do with them. Recast. Why? Why are we killing off Luke Spencer for the love of soul Jesus? Why? And sing. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And the young goes too. Thank you. 
<laughs> Depending on the recast, yes, I would. What about you, Candace? I mean, here, I mean, look, here it is. If you are a fan of this genre and you're a fan of General Hospital, and if you keep up with the fact of everybody in that family has faked the death once or twice, you know that man ain't dead. Exactly. There's, and I think Tracy knows it. Candace, you're so good with – no, I don't think Tracy knows. That I don't think. But mm-hmm. I don't I think would, Tracy knows. No. Candace, you're so good with remembering the lines exactly. It was Alexis, and she had said something to the effect of, who the two of you have already been dead back once or twice. I mean, what exactly did she like say you, that I almost fell off my chair? I, I think she said, you guys know how this operates. Like, do, do we see it? Like, I forgot how it goes, but when I heard that line, I was like, well, she should know. I mean, yep. she said people – I mean, here's the thing. Okay, in all honesty – you take a look at everybody in Luke's family, okay? Check this out. Laura has been presumed dead two times. Mm-hmm. Luke has been presumed dead two times. Lucky, Lucky has been presumed dead. Nicholas was presumed dead. Leslie, which is Laura's mom, died. Twice. Yep, twice. Yep, pretty much. Uh, let me see who else. Um, Elizabeth Lulu is Walsh, right there. Or something. Lulu, that you know, like everybody has faked a the only death. No so, been is Bobby. I can't think Bobby's never been presumed dead. That I no, think Bobby of. has it. Nope. Not that Bobby I can has remember. survived that. I mean, Carly faked the death. She came to her own funeral. Carly did. Can't yes, she did. Bust right people. through them doors. Can't, That's when Tamara played the role, right? People. Uh huh. Then you had Sonny. Uh, well, Michael was a, a presumed dead, but he. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm, mm. I had something in my throat too. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like to me, I think. I mean, we clearly got some clarification that Victor isn't is in cahoots with this thing. Because he made sure to say that, you know, phase two is on its way. Hmm. Again, if you know the history of General Hospital and you can see, it's actually, the funny thing is you actually can see the story playing out right now, and I don't think anybody's connecting the dots. That's how, this is how good some soul fans are, and some, I still love y'all, but let's take a look at what's happening here. Victor Cassadine is back, right? Victor Cassidy mm-hmm. didn't like Luke back from the dead. Okay. Right, he came back <laughs> yeah. and all his uh, all his sons too. <laughs> Can where's Styros at? Can we get Styros back up in this? Brother, call me. Um, here's the thing. I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm about to say right now. The Cassidy, the quarter mains are in a storyline, right? Is that correct? With Yeah. With uh Val- Yes. Mhm. And who is Tracy married to, allegedly? Luke. Oh, wait. Um, okay. Okay, you got you got it right. You got it right. Luke? Okay. No, she's not married right. to Luke yet. Well, she well you know what I meant. Right. Right. Okay. What does uh, Valentine want from Brooklyn? Or in the sense of everything. It's about the shares. It's about... The quarter main money. It's about all that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So he wants the title. He wants the title. He wants the title. And there's one other person that's kind of stopping them, and that's Tracy in a sense. So how do you break her down? How do you do all, like it's it's sort of like okay, you took something away from me with the sense of Valentine was the the baby was taken away from him. So his daddy is going to take something away from the quartermains, mostly Tracy. Oh, I get it. And Break down their defenses. Work. Break down their defenses. Right. Again, this is if GH does this, first and foremost, and this is why I said. Candace? Candace, the Belusia? She's still. I think she got uh, a drop call. She's All right, still I'm gonna put her down. I don't see her I'm, dropping. 
I've got a curious okay, question Sammy? for y'all. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, now I can hear you. Okay. okay, now I'm back. Okay, cool. This new microphone. Okay. But, no, the thing is is that if they go that route, because allegedly there's going to be a big, you know, goodbye to Luke Spencer. Right. I, I, I need for something to pop off, because here's the thing. Um, I, okay, I, I, I have to say this real quick. I do not – okay. I understand why they put the article out in mainstream, like everywhere, that Luke is gone and da 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 to get – people to watch the show that probably has tampered off. But because what I just said, like what we just said, whether you like him or not, Luke Spencer is an iconic soap character that drew in over 30 million viewers to a fictional wedding that to this day has not been broken. Right. 21 years ago, and I want you to think about that. They are part of Luke and Laura, most iconic duel of soap, point blank, they brought a new kind of blood to the genre. Now, with that being said, over 41 years, you've lost some viewers. But, again, when you say that the character of Luke Spencer, I don't know if some people even knew that he, Tony Gary retired. I don't, I don't know. But once you say that, that may bring people back in. However, this is one of those times where I'm like, okay, I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, y'all know darn good well that man ain't dead. And if y'all do kill this character off for real, for real, I don't even know what to say about that. Like, I'm hoping, obviously, as a soul fan, you're like, okay, back in, this, he ain't dead, he ain't dead. But if they were to really kill this character off, I would be like, wow. Like, okay. Now, see, I have, I have a theory. A couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago, there was a very small news item that circulated for about a day and a half and disappeared. And it was that Ken Constance Towers was back on set yeah. for a oh, day yeah. Yeah. at General Hospital. I think the yeah. part is a red herring, and that the phone call between the phone calls that Victor has made is to Helena, and Helena yep. finally has her Luke chained up to a bed or something. Exactly. You know, yep. on one of them Casadon small islands, not Casadon Island itself, but one of the smaller ones that's floating around the harbor around the island. She got him chained to a bed somewhere, and the big reveal is going to be when Laura goes on the adventure, she's going to leave Kevin behind her. She always does. Probably team up with Curtis and Felicia, um, Anna, and Robert. In the meantime, they're going to stop somewhere and pick up Holly wherever she is, and it's going to be a big O. Remember the heyday of... And this is going to be an umbrella story that's going to take us through the next couple of months leading up to, you know, leading up to, um, um, uh, you know, fall sleeps. It's going to take us through the spring and the summer and the whole nine yards. That's my half theory me, on this. Half of me agrees with that, but I, also, I, I do, <laughs> and I also do remember them saying Castens was back on set and everything. And I was thinking about this because Emma Sams has said, you know, Obviously, she's not still tra- – because the corona still is out there, okay? So I'm thinking about how they still can do this with the Zoom, okay? I mm-hmm. do believe Helena has Luke, but I believe that he is just like his son being re ramp and kind of oh. – Right. Mm. Like, I think he's kind of being brainwashed in a sense or – because I also got to remember the whole patient six, all that stuff. It's probably going to yeah. factor in all this as well. Uh-huh. Yeah, remapping uh, is certain, certain here's things. One clue. Here's one clue to all of that. We we don't never heard nothing about our Andrew Maddox. Andre, sorry. We don't never heard a single word about Andre Maddox. If the whole thing That's was true. faked, where is Dr. Maddox? Oh, he on one of them satellite Cassidine Islands programming Luke to want to get into bed with Elena. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yup. Okay, Again, GH, listen up. First, first and foremost, GH, congratulations on your WGA uh, award nomination today, along with Dave and Young and the Rossless. Congratulations to all the writers for, 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 you know, getting that nomination. However, Dan and Chris and the writing team of GH, if any of this happens, me and Anthony wants our money. We just yeah. want to cut. Yep. We, we just, we don't want all of it. We, we're give, we, we're share. 
I mean, we'll each take equal parts, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. I just got excited just now. I can see the promo. I can see the promo, too. Now, it would be nice to see. And, I've got a and curious the bonus question. Part. Oh, go ahead. What do you think is going on with Elizabeth? Some people are teasing that they could think that uh, Franco is still alive. And then the other question is, who do you think is gaslighting Elizabeth? I'm curious your take on that. Do you want me to be shady and give you my answer, or do you want me to be nice? Both, both. Because I'm curious, do you think this is another (laughs) part of the Umbrella storyline that's unraveling? (laughs) Okay, he said both. He said both. I want to be nice. February sweeps is around the corner, so go ahead, Candace. It's around the corner and down the street. Look, anything to get Elizabeth story time. Right. That's true. I'm at at that point now where I I think the real question needs to be, is Elizabeth going to be in a story period for February sweeps? Um, Because here's (sighs) – Do I think it's gaslighting? Okay, see, okay. If they say Franco's alive, then... Pete is is in custody. If Franco's alive, why wouldn't he reveal himself? Right. He wouldn't hide from nobody else. And you already have Austin there... You know, like, no offense to Roger Howard, I love him, especially even more today. Shout out to him and everybody over at Landview. I still miss you 10 years later. Um, yes. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the thing is, I, I think I think somebody is gaslighting her. <coughs> I would not Hayden. be surprised if it was either Hayden or Peter at this point because it's it, it's to the point where, Anytime I see Elizabeth, I'm just happy to see Elizabeth on my screen, given the fact that she should have been in two storylines that was actually sort of connected to her, like um, her really grieving Franco's death was probably one, and also her being told that her baby daddy was dead, Um, Mm -hmm. just saying. Um, So... That was the shadiest. Like I said, anytime that if she is, look, if on a Tuesday I see her, I'm happy she got 15 minutes. Um, being nice, though, um, like I said, I, I, no, that's the same as being shady. I couldn't even be, I was being nice when I said it, too. But that's what I think. I think it's something connected to Peter. I don't think it's Hayden because unless they're going to recast that role, Becky ain't, the other Becky ain't coming back. Um, by the way, GH, thanks, thanks a lot for making that happen. Um, but, um, and no, it didn't sound like that. It's just the way that they were trying to make it seem to drop hints that, hey, yeah, that Hayden was coming back and got me all excited. I was like, Hayden coming back. And then you're going to say something about Jeff Weber. And I'm like, oh, okay. But, um, but yeah, it, I, I, like I said, <laughs> and you said an umbrella storyline, I mean, Sadly, the umbrella has to feature somebody named Peter. So, again, anytime I can get 15 minutes of Elizabeth Weber on my screen, I'm good. Well, the little okay. rumbling that I've been hearing about Drew, what, what, I'm sorry, Peter, is that Peter is supposed to reactivate Drew so that he can kidnap Louise. And that's going to kick off another crazy story. Lord Jesus. Mm. Mm. Be nice, kid. Be nice. Mm. I can't do Don't, it. I can't do it Neither of you think it's Jake doing this? No. No. Not at all. No, but I didn't like how I didn't like how Finn kind of threw it out that he thought that Elizabeth's children would do something something like that. I thought that was a little kind of misguided on his part. But that's just me. I mean. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, okay, I'm going to be honest. What GH needs to do is, and this has been a thing for me, is, you know, everybody has said, you know, how come the children don't show the reaction of, you know, mommy bringing another guy in? And 
I'm at a point now where I'm going to say, yeah, I want that to be a storyline for Elizabeth. All three of her boys are at a certain age. Cameron is a grown, is a young man now, starting his own roots and everything, being just like her, his daddy, his biological daddy, Xander Smith. Then you have, you know, Jake, who, you know, I guess is dealing with some stuff too. And then you have Aiden. So, yeah. Them kind of not liking Finn and Finn not like it. And like Elizabeth, you know, said that, you know, her boys are her world and everything, you know. I, I like if they're going to set that up where, you know, Elizabeth's boys do not, they don't like really gel well with Finn or Finn doesn't gel well with the boys or, or even, um, I'm trying to remember all the kids' names here. But uh 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 what's Aiden? What's, uh, Aiden? No, no. Aiden, uh, Jake, Finn's Cameron. Daughter. No, Finn. Violet. 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 Thank you. Violet. If if you know they don't gel well or something like this is not the Brady bunch. Um. So if the kids do not feel each other or anything, or if the parents are like, I kind of want to see that, but I want to see Elizabeth's side of the of the story because um yes. GS, I'm noticing a pattern to here. When I said when I said that is with Elizabeth, you know, she's always again, like I said, she's always done right by her boys in the you know, in the sense of they do come first. And mm-hmm. again, the boys being of certain age, they're they're protecting their mom because they have now all seen that <laughs> Mommy needs to be protected because every guy that's come near her has died or somebody's gotten hurt. Yeah. And I'm not and saying it's funny, but I would love that. Funny, I would love that. I'd I would love, love to, to see that, see that too. The reaction know, but, being protected right. with her mom and her having mm-hmm. to defend and kind of like say, Finn, as much as I would like to get with you right now, it may not be a good idea because the boys just don't like the idea of it. Because like, I'm gonna let be, it be challenging. If, let it be challenging. Because yes. my thing is, is that if you're not going to – because I, because this is another thing that I, this is why I said about the the whole Hayden thing. Because at first I thought Hayden was going to come back, and I was like, oh, I think I know where this is going to go at. Because it would have been reminiscent of Liz, Lucky, Sarah, or Sarah Lucky and Elizabeth back in the heyday, or or something to that effect. But because they're not doing it, I can I can see that being a storyline, but. I'm not having my whole set up. So anytime, again, Elizabeth has screen time in this year, I'm happy. Yep. Well, I'm going to say two things. And and the first is, what if we recasted Hayden with Melissa Archer as Hayden? Bam! Mm. Mm. And if nobody wants to comment on that, I, I want to <laughs> throw another something out there. You already um, know saw, you're just gonna cause you're gonna cause a, a whole firestorm with what you just said. <laughs> with girl, Melissa Archer. Uh-huh. And, girl, and, and you said it on to, and you said it of, of, of all days. You said it tonight. <laughs> I, I know, girl. I know. But okay, Kelly Monaco wanted me to tell you. Wait a minute, Anthony. Kelly Monaco wanted me to tell you. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> But Frank Valentini <laughs> wanted me to tell you. <laughs> you got that right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got actually I got two more things to say because you brought up Kelly Monaco. So I'm gonna go back to the Franco thing for a second. Roger Ooh, Howard could play the heck out of playing both of those characters on screen and make it believable. But you know, I, I, I've been out of marriage counseling. You know, we, 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 we worked it out for now. GH and I are not, you know, we are not sitting on the couch. Did oh, you y'all do went that? to the same therapist? Yep. Yep, we went, we to, went the to the same. Yep. Oh, uh, uh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, general hospitals do that, and, 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 and I'm getting a new set of papers drawn up, and not by Alexis Davis because she ain't got no go license no more. Oh, but, no, see, I got Michael Baldwin so, drew up my paperwork. Oh, we're going to get to that in a little while. Um, but right. something we discussed mm-hmm. on this show a while ago, before anyone knew that Christina Wagner was coming back to General Hospital on contract. Amen. Glory, glory. Anyway, it's nice. um, it is now time for them to tell the story that they should have told two years ago. Okay? Esme 
we all know at some point is going to break Ryan Chamberlain out of prison, out of yeah. Sweetwater or whatever the hell it's called. Now, let's right. hope it's while Laura and everybody is off campus or, 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 you know, at least out of Port Charles, maybe not off screen, but out of Port Charles doing whatever they need to do. And he needs, we, we need to see Ryan and Felicia, the final showdown. I'm with that. Yeah. I'm with that. Yeah. H- however, we need I have to a see funny, funny feeling or something. And see, if GH no. does this, if GH does this, I'm for one going to be not too happy about it. Oh, you There's think Kevin is missing a hand, don't you? No. I think Felicia has another daughter. You think That's oh. me. Mm-hmm. She ran away. That's right. She was with Grandma Mariah in Texas. She could have given birth, and nobody would have been the wiser. Oh, girl, Nettie. Hey, well, oh, Candace. Candace. Oh! So, here's That's, the thing. That's right. Oh, well, right. where are my sound so, effects? Here, Oh, okay. That was good, Candace. I'm going back 90s, <clears throat> like early 90s, with um, Ryan and Felicia. The first time around with the kidnapping and the fake death. And for some yep. reason, I'm like, I'm see, this is going to be a retcon to a point where this is okay. I'm going to be honest, this is one of those things about each show, fan, fan, fan bases are like detectives and everything because they will put two and two together here. The reason right. I said there's going to be a, probably a retcon in the sense is because just like any other kid, they have to make, okay, so General Hospital, wait a minute, let me just start from the beginning of where my theory comes from. Hayden, Peter, Nell, okay, that's about it for right now. They started off as normal characters that just went into a storyline and it was connecting with other people. Then all of a sudden they were connected to legacy characters, whether it was a sister, a long-lost son or daughter or somebody from the marriage on up. I don't know. So when this happened, I was like, okay, we, they better address that Ryan is the fault because why else would she have this? Thing with him, unless unless GH you go up through a different route, and this is being organic, as I don't know what if they were to do this, if she was a fan of his work, and sort of being a copy, be awesome. not like a copycat cat, but like do certain things that he would like be okay, like in the sense that she lost her father, as we all heard, or something like that, but that she looks up to this man like in a creepy psychological way, looks up to this man as an idol, and it's like, okay, what would Ryan do in this situation? I would be, first and foremost, I would be down for that, but knowing how GH operates, she's going to be Ryan's daughter. Now, obviously, all the fans have put two, two, two and two together and say, yeah, okay, you know, why else would Ryan have that look in his face? But the, all, the question has always been, as every other character who doesn't have a mama, who's the mama? Mm-hmm. So let's look at the let's, let's look at Ryan's handbook. Okay, all the women in his life is dead. <laughs> you know, like you take a look, everybody is dead. Except for one, his obsession. So what if he did something to Felicia, or what did Felicia do? Well, what if Felicia did something to ensure that her freedom, that her children was in, was okay? What if she would have sacrificed her own self, and you know, not and you know, I don't know how they're gonna. Tom, Tom oh my this in the timeline. And that her daughter is now sacrificing her granddaughter for the same damn reason. Oh, my mm-hmm. God, what a story. Oh, mm-hmm. my God, what a mm-hmm. story. Yes. And, again, General Hospital, if you want to use that storyline or you probably didn't know or you want to, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and I still want my cut. So, um, yeah, you fine. can Venmo her. To ensure no chance, because I'm going to make sure I get that money. But no, like, it's just, it's too, it's too, because my thing is, what, as me, I, first of all, I do like the actress. I do like this character. It did spruce up the, the younger adult set, 
But also mm-hmm. there's the other side of this character that we still need to get some clarification on. So it's either you, you make her the daughter, meaning that there's a mama out there, or you go ahead and do the, okay, he's my idol. Like, I, I like him. He's psychotic like me. I get it. I feel him. Y'all don't understand him the way I do. I actually be down for that one too, but you know. mm. but yeah, the Felicia thing, I just say. All right, one more. Uh, are we gonna are we gonna see another LGBTQ couple? What Harmony and Alexis? Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Do you want it? No. Not I don't. that. Not that coupling. No. I and mean. Bef- and- Oh, go ahead. She is suddenly going to realize now, after all the men that she slept with and killed, that that she's been a lesbian all this time? No. No. No, no. we can't. No, she's going to be bisexual. Well. <laughs> I have two pro- Okay. First and foremost, I'm saying this, is, and don't anybody, like, message me and say, oh, Candace is as a sex. I have friends in all pools, okay? And I'm going to say it like that. I have friends in all pools, shape, sizes, <laughs> colors, hair, hairstyles, even though two of y'all that I know I do not approve of the long hair that y'all decided to rock, okay? I'm just saying. I love y'all. But we'll talk later about that. I know you're listening to the show, and I know I'm probably going to get a call later. But anyway, here's the <laughs> thing about General Hospital. Out of all the soaps, you know, Young and Russell has Tariah. Bold has none. None, no, Bold, right. none. Days of Our Lives got some hot ones going on right now. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. They have Wilson and they have, um, Ch- Ch- what, what is it? What is their Janelle? What's name? Callie, Ch- Callie, Ch- Chanel, yeah. And Janelle, not for nothing. Yeah. And then you got Leo. Then you got oh, no, Leo. Yeah, and then Callie. not. And, yeah, Charlie. Then you got Leo, and an honorable mention is Xander and Paul. Thank you. General Hospital, though. <laughs> look, I'm not even going to sugarcoat this. They have the most, right? They and did. when I say their yeah. names, when I say their names, I'm going to ask this question. You, I'm going to ask the question that you just asked just now, David. Okay. Yeah. Brad Lucas Felix, Christina Parker Valerie. Carrie, let me make sure I got all of them. Okay. Yeah. Terry. Terry. Oh, Terry. Okay. Yeah, Terry. Terry. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Miss- I I just named what seven seven characters, right? right? I just named seven, correct? Yeah. Right. Where are they? Where are they? Take out take bread. Like bread just recently hidden. came back. Right. So, to me, if you're going to do Alexis and Harmony, you better come through. Because, the, and, and, and I'm going to say this, and this is going to be very controversial, but just because just like that did it, doesn't mean just like that, GH, you have to do it. Miranda and Alexis are two different people. Uh-huh. Yes, they're both, from, they're both cut from the same cloth, but that doesn't mean we have to go that route. Now, do I want a friendship, a female friendship on this show? Hell yeah. Do I think Alexis yeah. deserves a friendship? Yes. yes. But do I feel as though they need to, quote, unquote, um, do this? Because, and I'm not saying that, and before anybody say that, I'm going to say the reason I'm not, because if you do it, you you have to be invested in telling the story and not just showing it just for Emmy Real. <laughs> Or exactly. for on a special on a special yes. general hospital, what do you do when your life is at mid midway? Find out what Alexis Davis does on the next general hospital, ABC daytime. I don't need that. Like to me, if you're going to do it, do it right. Have Christina be there. Like it, I feel as though like this is it. Really, because again, I somebody asked me this question earlier that you know they feel as though. General Hospital needs to incorporate uh, another um, another character. And I'm like, but we already have all those characters. Like, you had Christina. 
Christina is the daughter of Alexis Davis and Sonny Carrasco. Where is she? Mm-hmm. She could have been in five, and I counted, five big stories in the last two <laughs> years, and she wasn't yep. there. And I understand Lexi is busy. I get it. But still, you should have had that girl in a storyline. You gave her a storyline that was so good of her being afraid to come out to more her father than her mother. You had crafted a great storyline. What what happened? Got her Emmy. Where Parker at? I know yeah. Ashley Jones is busy. You could have really had the role. That, that would have been a simple task. Right. Where is Valerie? Valerie Valerie look, Valerie got three things Jeez. going for. First first and foremost, Valerie She's a Spencer. Uh, she's a Spencer. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I kinda of remember that too. She's a Spencer, she's a cop and she was she was they were, you know, fooling around with Christina and her. Where's she at? No, seriously, yeah. where is she? Because I really don't know. I know where Lucas is because Lucas moved out of Port Charles. Yeah, where? What about Zoya? Exactly. Exactly. You answered my question. You don't know. Like that? No, because they said one day that Lucas moved out of Port Charles. That was it. That was it. That was that one. Lo- that was it. To me, you had you had the perfect opportunity for a you know how I felt about the custody battle storyline. Brad mm-hmm. and Brad and Lucas to me was a great couple. Yeah. They busted them up. <laughs> Phyllis got no play. I'm so mad at that. Um, let me see, Christina Parker. Yeah, and then you got Terry. Love Francesca James. I love Cassandra James. I'm sorry. I love that girl. You gave her a storyline of being co co uh, chief of staff. Okay, what else do we got? They they need to put her in in Austin's orbit. I mean, like. They need to allow her to get busy. She needs to get busy now. She got the job. Now she needs to get busy. Like you established yep, yep, the yep. fact that Jeff Weber kept calling her, that she's Elizabeth's friend, that, you know, people see her one way and everything, that she is, a, you know. But, yeah, you do need to do more for her and the other characters of the LGB community because the problem, the problem is, and I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off, Okay. So please ahead, understand, girl. this is my opinion, and, and it's a strong one. The only time y'all show show love, and I'm talking to GH, is when it's the time of the month or the time of the year where you know you have to do it. To me, you can't just like, do that. Like you need to like be all year round. Like I'm sorry. Like okay, what was it? A couple of months ago, it it was like. National Trans Day, and you had Sandra do like a little thing, and y'all like did a little like, um, like you know we support. And I'm thinking, okay, that's that's great. You guys support, I support, and everything. So write for them instead of on today's special General Hospital after school break special. Parker and Christina yeah, no. has a talk. Like they check you know all I mean? the boxes. It's time for them now to rip the damn page off the pad. It's time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So to me, it's like, I, I feel, because I feel, y'all know how I am about this genre. <laughs> y'all know how strong I am about, like, certain things. And that's why, like, I, I like I said, I appreciate what GH does, but at the same time, you need to do more. You need to do better. This is a new year, so you got a new chapter. If you want to incorporate everybody in the world of Port Charles, you incorporate them. Don't isolate everybody just for an agenda. No, yeah, I you're not, see, no, I'm not, you're not Terry, doing them a yeah. service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And, you know, it's, I'm just and gonna, it's sad, so. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this last piece out. You, we, soap operas have done it with women over and over and over again. Young women, middle-aged women, and even older women. It's all been done. The only time that soaps have done it with men is young men. Young men. So if you want to tell that story that somebody in midlife is suddenly really coming to terms with who they are or want to explore something new or whatever, let's do it with a man. Let's break some new ground. If, if you're going to play... 
If you're going to play in that arena, then do it with a man and break some new ground. I agree with that. I agree with that. All right. Let's take a trip because I have to leave in a few minutes. Let's take a trip to one of the other soaps. And uh, Candace, you yep. choose. I choose Young and the Rockless for 300. Oh, girl. <laughs> Oh, I thought we were playing Jeopardy. I thought we were playing Jeopardy. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just going to rip this one off because, look, I was going to talk about the show, but then all of a sudden Tuesday happened, and I was <coughs> clearly you. not prepared. I was clearly not prepared for Tuesday at all because after, what was it, 15 missed calls, four, four uh, missed calls, messengers and everything, all of you guys apparently knew that I was probably the first to be told about this. Um, but I'm just going to say, okay, yeah, last week, you know, um, Young and the Russells made a decision to let go Richard Berg, who played Ashton Locker. And nobody knew why <laughs> they did that. Obviously, you know, for those who wanted to know, he signed a contract, but they extended the contract. He didn't re-sign the contract, okay? So let's get that straight. They extended it because re-sign. they were still telling the No, they yeah, extended Candace. his contract. Well, he did a he they, did a um he did an he did Instagram an story where he did hit what happened, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. But there's some there's some stuff online, but I just want to say that. But um, here's the thing. So then all of a sudden, again, people, you know, he posted the video and, you know, he said, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, moving on, okay. And then his wife, comp, you know, said it was the writers, da 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 Okay. Then on Tuesday, it was announced yep. that fan favorite from God and Life, the show that I know nothing about, apparently, <laughs> wink, wink, <laughs> that Emmy Award nominee actor Robert Newman was joining the cast. Now, right. let me just say this. I nearly almost fell out of my seat because I came back mm-hmm. from lunch. I did too. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> wait a minute, what? 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 Oh, well, I hear you. I did, I did, I couldn't I did share all it fast of that. Enough. I did it so quickly when I saw it pop up on my thing that I was like, send, share, send, share. I was like, Did I just double send it? So Robert Newman is coming on to, you know, jump in. Like, it's it's sort of an emergency recast, technically, okay? Richard did comment on his Instagram explaining the situation. Now, um, I'm just going to say this because I I don't want to get into the whole da-da-da-da-da-da. Um. Rock on CBS <laughs> Sorry. does things with a, with that's also CB, CDC guidelines. I'm going to say for you guys to look it up and you come to your conclusion, because a lot of people are on different, you know, things. Um, what I will say is, is that Richard is a great actor. Um, yeah. Besides Young and the Rockless, that's my housewives. He's done a lot of other other shows. He's great at at, at his his job. It is said that he's leaving due to the circumstances. Um, but as they all say, the show must go on. Um, Robert Newman is stepping in. He debuts next month. He's looking forward to um, getting his feet wet because he hasn't done he hasn't done a daytime drama in a while. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see him um, jump back. But I'm just going to be honest. The selfish part of me is, like, really excited because I know that Robert Newman and, and Eric Brady are going to have things. You have no idea how this is making me feel right now. So I'm going to pass it on to you guys. Thoughts about Robert Newman coming to Young and Restless. <laughs> I'm enjoying the fans' reactions to it because they're like, bring on Kim Zimmer. And I'm like, you know what? That would be cool. I could see Kim Zimmer playing the role of Cassie Reed, which is Nikki's sister. Oh. Oh. That could be interesting. That's what I do in my fan fiction when I write for Young and the Restless. I I use Reba as um inspiration for for Re- for Nikki's sister on that on my I series. mean so I mean I could let, I could let, see it happening for Young and the Restless. Let let it be known that that is like the top. Well, we'll, we'll I, I want to hear David and Anthony's responses and then I'll 
I'll say something about that. Okay. Um, I'll let you know. I, I, don't, I am, I don't I am looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am looking forward to it. It would be nice to see Robert back on our screens again. I have mi- I have missed him. I uh, followed him. I'm not not as I'm a guiding light fan as much as Candace is. And I, have no idea what you're I look about. forward to what he can bring. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I might. I might. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm, okay, so I'm going to start this way. I don't think that this happened exactly as we the information that we've been given. I, I, it, I think they were in talks, and when the situation presented itself, they jumped with this rather than creating a whole new character for Robert Newman. I don't think he, he graciously stepped in at the last minute that what phone call was made. Hum and a hum and a hum and a who? No, I think they were already in talks, and this situation crept up, and bam. It, it solved a whole bunch of dilemmas for Y&R, especially their salary cap that they have going on right now and that they need to get rid of two or three more major players because they are severely over budget. But that's all I'm going to say on that piece of it. On the Robert Newman coming to play with the power players, it is not going to work with, it, with the current storyline the way it is, but the character itself is is pretty damn perfect for Robert. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see him pop up on the screen, but not in the current storyline that we're seeing. <laughs> and I agree with you there, because there is a rumbling that, that, that they are going to change. Robert is going to play the character, yes. But I also did hear they wanted to change the character in a to move to a different direction. So that kind of fits with what Anthony is saying about the fact that um, it doesn't fit with the current story, which does make sense. I have three thoughts, three speculations about this. Um, one, you know, somebody, you know, somebody said, you know, what if Robert is playing the real Ashlyn? Yep. Um, that was the my, second one, one is that, you know, just like with Days of Our Lives with the Tyler Christopher situation and Brandon Barras, you know, um, Brett, um, that they were, they're wrapping up the character. Um, another theory is is that, you know, <laughs> again, it goes back to the whole fake-out situation. My thing is this, is that I, I literally had, had did a Twitter space when I said this, is that, yeah. one, for us who know who Robert is, it's great to have him back on daytime television. Yeah. For those who yeah. don't know him and everything, I like I said, don't go on YouTube and look it up or what he did on Gone Light. And the reason I said that is because Joshua Lewis and Ashley Locker are two different characters. So his style of acting is going to probably be two different things. If anything, I would suggest to kind of look at Santa Barbara when he was on there because it's a little close to that character. But then again, I think people need to have an organic feel. When I said this this story was trending on social media, it was literally trending on social media, which I was like, oh, yeah, what, was. The, what the what the mess? Um, but once again, I feel as though, first and foremost, safety is key. Safety is the, it's the top priority. Um, and so you know people are not messing around with, with this kind of stuff. Um, like I said, there's a lot of debate about how this all happened and what went down and who, if the, if they were following the right protocol or the, you know, da 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 da. Oh, like I said, I saw the Barcon CBS the, uh, documents of the rules, um, and I know what the CDC says, and I also know what me as Candace would do, and um, and I'm gonna leave it at that. But yeah, like you said, you know, it is gonna be. You know, the, obviously it's going to be a different uh, chemistry hey. with everybody. Yep. But I do want to see the story play out. Um, as far as the Kim Zimmer thing about, I mean, the ongoing joke has always been that K- K- um, Casey Reed, like, you know, fans want Kim Zimmer to play that role. I do too. But here's the thing, you know, we, we joked about this, and I think everybody on Twitter said it too. They was like, dag G.H., because everybody wanted Robert Newman to play Jeff Weber. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's like, one, and some people, and if you want to go and tie it all back to Young and the Rustless, some <laughs> people wanted Eric, uh, uh, Robert Newman to play uh, Christian. 
uh, Victor's brother. Oh, Matt. Like, you mean? Matt, yeah, thank you. That would have so, been really you know, cool. So, but all I got to say is, God, like, continues to shine. Told y'all. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It does continue to shine, though. Seriously. I'll talk about it. So, yeah, welcome back. Robert Neiman, welcome back. So, uh, so let's talk about Young and the Ruffles. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to the special episode. Okay. Because uh, I have a I have a lot of feelings on this. Um. So Wednesday, yeah, no Monday. Sorry, because I'm used to Wednesdays now for their special episodes. Huh, it must be a guy on light thing. Um. So Monday it was Christian LeBlanc's um 30th anniversary episode. Michael Baldwin thir- hashtag 30 years of Michael Baldwin, and we got to see uh pretty much his whole story including the characters, some on screen, some in flashbacks, some not even mentioned. Um, as he, just like us, we weigh options of what to do next, you know, after mm-hmm. doing something for so long, what, what is the next move? And the choices was to either consider to stay in legal, in, in law, or to mm, retire. Um, and so he seeked the advice from Horn, but guess what? Guess who came in? Cricket. First and foremost, let me say this. I can't believe it's been 30 years since Christian LeBlanc started on Young and the Rossless. Right. That kind of made me feel a certain type of way, considering that oh, I even girl, remember yeah. him on Ask the Wall Turns. I remember him on yep. Ask the Wall Turns in the heat of the night with my great-grandmother, okay? So, yep, me too. Uh, Chris, Christian, you've been a part of my life long, <laughs> it's a long time. But, I mean, it's Michael Baldwin and... The first person that overheard the conversation was Cricket. Now, for us who was there for it, for the beginning, they went over their history, which, <laughs> ha, ha, um, which, you yeah, know, resulted in the, the whole started. sexual harassment and the, sec- you know, all that stuff and, the creepy factor of it that he literally got disbarred because of Christina, um, a.k.a. Cricket, that his life would kind of went into shambles, and he had an unhealthy obsession with her. So here's my question to you guys. Yeah. Um, looking back at it now and looking at how Michael has transformed from that creepy guy, to this guy that we see now, do you think if this if his character was to be introduced in the last three years that it that he would have been accepted or written out already based off of the that that time period of Young and the Russells with Michael Baldwin, him being kind of been. arrogant and then um, going into the creepy factor. And I'm going to get into this because I have to go right after this. I'm sorry, okay. folks. I'll be back in it's two okay. weeks with you all. Um, I think on another show, yes. On Young and the Restless, no. He, mm. he, 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 they could not tell that story the same way now um, that they told it then. No. Then. Mm-hmm. I agree. They now, Denver Hospital could. They would have written him out real fast, and that would have been kind of sad, but Unfortunately, with the way some of the writers are going with certain stories these days, I would agree with Anthony that, yeah, he probably would last, I would give him maybe about two, two three weeks on that show of Young and the Restless, and his character would probably no, I'd him, out. i give him like seven months. Um, Paul's son. They would, have, they would have given him the same treatment that they gave Paul's son, that they gave the, the guy in the hook, the happy hooker storyline, you, you know. Uh, <laughs> JT, or the one that, you know, JT that they brought back. But on that note, folks, I got to go. I'll see you in two weeks, and I hope you have a great okay. rest of the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Bye, you, Anthony. Anthony. Okay. Yeah, Candace? Yeah, I... I think, I think um, the public is a lot more sensitive in these past couple of years, and mm-hmm. I I think there'd be a lot there's gonna be there would be a lot to say. Back then, we were a lot more naive and could take things better. Be, maybe because we were 
so compared to today, it seems like back then we were so much more unaware of what could mm. hurt people and what couldn't hurt people. I I mean, I definitely think because of the times we're in now, that story with Michael and Christina could not be told because you're right, everybody would have – it would be a very sensitive subject to even craft and not for nothing. I don't think they would actually have gone as hard as they did with versus how we saw things. Because Bill Bell, you know, William J. Bell was like, guess what we're about to do? We're about to do this. This is what, this is the kind of style of writing that is missing in daytime. Um, where you do go kind of in and without saying, you know what, I'm not really going to care, but I'm going to care and be very sensitive to people. Um, yeah, I don't think Michael Baldwin would actually survive, to be honest, the way he was back then. Um, but, you know, him and Cricket had this conversation in front of Lauren where they hashed it out. And, and you know, you can tell Michael – and I say this, and again, people don't be mad at me, but this is this is one of those characters that did not have a tumor, did not to, need to be redeemed nope. in the sense of, you know, stuff like that. He still has scars from what he did, and he said that to Christina. He was like, there was times where I just didn't know, you know, who I was and the fact that you stood by me and all that stuff. I mean, that tells a lot about... You know, even Cricket, you like Cricket said she was, you know, she looked up to him and 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 everything like that. And because of Cricket, because of the person that, um, pretty much, you know, he was trying to destroy. She's the one who gave him the second chance, and that's right. something again. You you know the fact that they still had to start over again. They didn't like each other. You know, they liked it each other, and then went to that point and that they had to start over and respect each other. So I thought that was interesting, you know, that because I think the question has always been, how can they work together after all of that? You know, and the fact yeah, that they it. said it, you know, they actually said it in dialogue, and I was like, okay, so Christina feels as though if Michael decides to quit or retire, it's the end of the era. Ain't that the truth? Okay, so yeah. Michael needed Michael, you know, was like, okay, Lauren had to go. I mean, not Lauren. Cricket had to go because apparently she was picking up food for her and Paul. <laughs> Paul, mm -hmm. missing in action. Paul should have been there oh. to tell his side of the story. But then we have the Victor Newman. Oh, boy, here we go. So if anybody knows what Michael Baldwin is going through, it would be Victor Newman. So, of course, Victor Newman said, well, look, if you give up, being the DA, you can come over and work for me. <laughs> I mean, look, Victor Newman is not called Victor Newman for anything. He knows the, he knows the deal when he sees it. He told Michael, you'll be doing your own thing, working your own hours, but you'll still be working for me. Like, you'll still be able to do your, your family thing and still be doing the business thing. So then they went over their history. And trust me, the clips, okay, there was one particular clip I wish they would have shown, but they didn't show, but as, I'm going to let it go. But both times it showed, like, that Michael and Victor, Michael has done a lot of dirty things to get a win for his clients, but at the same yep. time, some of his clients have done dirty things to get a win for Michael. So he showed that. So Michael's still unsure of what to do. Like, he's constantly asking Lauren, and Lauren is like, whatever you want, da 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 da, -da and, you know, I'm going to stick by you. So you already heard from Cricket, you already heard from Victor. Well, guess who else is coming to the party? To -choo! his mama, his Chloe. brother, and his sister-in-law. Okay. I will say that I love Chloe, but... I don't think she should have been in this episode. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I, I Like I said, I like Chloe, but and I understand she's a part of the family, but to me she doesn't have the history with Michael, with Michael. versus Kevin and Glory, Gloria. 
So with Gloria, look, here's the thing. Judy Chapman, honey, you can come on that show anytime, and your presence is always going to be felt. Because I was like, yes, yes, Judy, 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 Judy. Um, but, you know, we showed, you know, their scenes of how there's not any blood, love lost between those two, and she knows, you know, Glory is, Gloria is a person who she wants her name in light. She wants to be, you know, a part of society, but she's proud of her son. She is proud of Michael. Right. But, you know, she she actually said this, and it's funny because you think about this. Glory has said, I'm too, I'm too young, quote, unquote, old to have a, a son retire while she's still yep. out there. So, in other words, you know, it's, we've all had her, have a family member that will say this, like, mm, you can't be that old. No, I'm only, mm-mm. no, what are you talking about? I'm only 30. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-mm. No, mm-mm. Like that thing. But another thing somebody had asked me on social media is, why does Michael call his mom by her first name? And I said, well, they that's the kind of relationship they have. You know, they – it's where she's mom, but she's not mom. You know, she's like, right. okay, mom is a title that you have to give. Now, the real part was with Kevin and Michael. You talk about brothers who, who torture souls. Michael has been there for Kevin when nobody else was for Kevin and vice versa. And I think it took when Michael, you know, almost died, you know, and, you know, got hit and hurt and all that stuff for Kevin to realize right. what kind of brother he had. So Kevin That's and That's where the Chloe, Emmys came in. Well, we don't talk – well, I mean, yeah, they got Emmys, but you still can feel their connection. Yeah. It ain't always about the Emmys for some people. But I just, you know, Kevin and Michael, like I said, they have definitely been tortured. And once again, there was no – there, to, to me, these two have kind of re, not redeemed but reformed and kind of start over in their lives where, again, they know, they understand that, hey, look, I'm not supposed to have all of this. I don't know who's looking out for me, but I'm not supposed to have right. all of this. So Michael's like, but I can spend more time with my, with my niece and nephew. I can spend more time with you guys. And they're like, Michael, you are too much of a workaholic to understand what a break is. And you would be driving everybody crazy. And I love how in the show they kind of also alluded to Christian LeBlanc's um, passion of art and everything. Right. And I was like, oh, that's cute. So, you know, again, Michael was kind of, you know, back and forth with it. And then he asked Lauren, and then they flash back to Finn. And, yes, that tinker is apparently still playing Finn because they used the flashback and everything. I wish Zach was available to – to come over and be like, or make a call, like, Lauren, make a call to Finn, and Finn is like, hello? Like, Dad, you know you're not supposed to retire. I'm in law school. I'm just saying, Young and Russell's. Come on now. But, you know, Lauren says, you know, how lucky, you know, Michael said, how lucky were we? Again, Michael and Lauren, one of the most beloved couples on that show, think about their history. They're not supposed to be together. In all honesty, like, it's like, okay, they found their way and they was true to themselves. They faced a lot of tough, you know, tough times and stuff. And Lauren even acknowledged yep. that. It's like, you know, she, I mean, she did cheat on him a few times. He kind of lied to her. Like, they, they, they burned each other, burnt, you know, um, sides. But at the end of the day, Michael wants to be with his, his woman. So, all in all, I think it was a great episode. But this is my problem, Young and the Rosslers. Is it the same one I'm thinking of? It might and be. Said, another standalone. Well, okay, here's the thing. So with the standalones, I know what he, what Josh Griffin is doing, but at the same time, not everybody deserves one. Like for anniversary purposes, as long as it ties into something that's going to happen next, I'm okay with. Like Christian LeBlanc, I'm fine with. But my problem is when I was watching that episode, and this is the thing, Young and Russell, there's certain, okay, currently you have a baby storyline that's involving all the family members, pretty much all the characters. This is your umbrella storyline. And I'm cool with that because you're kind of doing some things that I'm, I've been begging for. You're kind of finally doing it. But at the same time, when I'm watching these flashbacks, and I think as soap fans we all do this, is that we compare then versus now. 
And I think mm-hmm. it hurts a little bit when you see like Michael Ball, like the Fisher Baldwin family, on, but you don't have them all the time. Now Chloe, take Chloe out the equation, but Chloe is the third kind of wheel in the in the Chelsea Sally thing. So right. we don't see her like that's the only time we see her. But Kevin, we don't see much of. We don't see Michael much. and Lauren, we don't see much of, and Finn is nowhere in sight. So it's sometimes when you watch these episodes and you think, okay, Young and the Rustlers, you have the Newmans, you have the Abbots, you have the Chancellors, you have the Hamilton Winters, you have, you know, other characters surrounding all of them. Why can't you have more of the Fisher Baldwin family? Like that's, you know, and I understand everybody has, you know, other things going on, but it's like when you see those classic episodes, you're also thinking like, dad, this show used to be hardcore. And not saying that it's not, but it's just right now it's just. They downplayed them. Okay. It. They downplayed them. Right. It's yeah. like like each day is like, you now, like I said, the baby storyline, yes, it's heating up a little bit because Devon still wants that baby. But, you know, he has r- reasons of wanting that kid. You know, he lost his first child. He feels a connection to this child that he has, which is his biological. Yes, Chance and Abby, they both agreed they wanted to start a family, but Chance does not feel as a certain type of way because he doesn't want to let – right, like he's very insecure, and he has very good reasons. His biological father faked his death instead of being around him. His other father figure was shot. Thanks, Trisha. Um, you know, he, you know, did get a taste of what was it like to be a kind of a, a stepfather. Because here's the thing, Chloe and Chance was a couple, and Chloe had Delia at that time. And Chance right. loved Delia. That's what made him want to be a father. Yes. Abby has her own insecurities as well. Young and Russell's can do these kind of storylines to make you feel, you know, again, when I was watching Monday, I felt I was like, oh, the classic cues. Oh, ow. I was like, that's Michael and Lauren's song. Wait, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. The only thing I wish um, Younger Russell's y'all would have had was a Christian LeBlanc intro uh, of all the intros he's been part of. That's that's all I actually wanted. They did wanted. that. But, did they do that yeah. for the inserts? I thought I saw one yeah, of the old inserts. Yeah, they had the bumper. Inserts. Yeah, they had the bumper, but I still wanted the intro. I'm, look, I'm so happy. Much- I wanted it all. My question for you and for David as well is, what do you think about this storyline for the baby storyline? Do you think that Devon deserves the shared custody that he's fighting for, or do you think he went too far? Does he deserve it? He's earned it. Um, he pro- you know, he's feeling the same thing Mariah ha- it did. And I, I I think they swept Mariah's under the rug more. And we're probably going to see it come out more in Devon. And whether he deserves it or not, I, I don't know. I can't make that. I can't make that distinction. That's hard to say. I mean, he is the biological father, but you know what they say. It doesn't. It takes. It takes the chemistry to make a dad, but to be a dad, it takes a lot more than that. So, and we don't know how Chance feels, right? I know Chance wants to be there for his son because he wanted this before he left. So this is going to be a mess like on all five family fronts. Did I get it right, Candace? Five, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So I feel as though he is kind of going too far because the thing is, is that again, it goes back to the beginning, Amanda and Brittany both told Devon and Mariah, were you sure about giving up your rights? That, you know, Brittany was like telling Mariah, you have no rights after this baby is born unless the parents invite you to be a part of this child's life. But you will not have, like, legal rights to this child. Amanda told Devon, you're going to catch feelings. Are you sure you want to give up your parental rights as a biological father? 
He said yes. Now, with that being said, it's one way, it's one thing to change your mind, but this is not like a pair of shoes, okay? You can't just go back to the store and say, uh, yeah, can I, like, you know, get a refund? You can't do that. Now, should he talk to Abby and Chance? Yes. Should they try to make a plan where he's more inserted? Because here's the thing, Abby, you did this. You did this too. You have a hand in what, why Devon is feeling this way. First and foremost, any time that something was wrong with the baby, you went to Devon instead of your own family. You did. You really made sure that he was tightly involved in your kid's life. And the thing is, the first few months of a child's life, they'll bond with people that has always been there for them. And that's what Devon and Dominic have. Another factor is is that um, Chance, know, Chance knows that Devon has been there and he thanked him, and Devon knows that something is up. Instead of going for a custody battle, Devon needs to talk to all, to, like everybody needs to sit down and really have a conversation about what's best for this child. Because, and but I said this from the beginning, if they were going to go to a custody battle, you're going to have people who are not going to be friends after this. You're going to have a person that they're going to not like. And, yeah, right now Devon is that person. Because Devon, even though he has good attention, it's like, okay, so what about Abby and Chance? Like, how is Chance going to feel? Because he's already in, like, a, a post-traumatic stress disorder phase right now. And Mariah, here's the thing. Mariah's off living her best life again. Hey, girl, what's yeah. up? Like, you know, so I'm curious as where this is going to go, but half of me is like, ooh, okay. Like, like I get, and the thing is I get all three sides. And I think that's really important because, like I said, Devon has some history where now he, now he knows what it's like to be a father, he now know, he mm-hmm. now grabs the idea. Abby and Chance, they just came back together. Chance was dead. <laughs> you know. So now it's like, okay, they're trying to adjust being a family and now all of a sudden this happens. So I'm curious as to what they're gonna do, but has he earned I mean, again, like I said, has he earned, you know, being a part of the kid's life? Well, yeah, I mean, he, you know, Abby made sure to insert him. It wasn't like she was going to cut him out permanently. It's just legally he has right. no rights. But apparently he does. Oh. They just want they just want chance to settle in. Yeah, cuz chance and, and the thing is is that see chance has never been like the thing is, this this child is the first for all of them. Like, okay, yeah, Abby. Here's the thing. I'm gonna break it down. Abby was a stepmother to Max. Max caused her to have a miscarriage. She can't have kids. So technically, Abby kind of has parenting skills. Chance has none. Except for, well, kinda, with, with Delia. Again, I go back to Delia but not of his own. And he had a bad upbringing. Like, he didn't have a bad upbringing. He just had a bad father. Then you have yeah. Devon. Devon, his biological parents gave him up, kind of abandoned him. Tucker living his best life. His mama was doing drugs. He got he got lucky with Drew and Neil. And he then did. Hillary became pregnant, and they both died. So there's a lot of emotions going on right now while they see Dominic. Yeah. So. There's a lot. Mhm. There's a lot to contend with 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 that. Yep. At least the drama is going to be there. Hopefully. Yeah. And and that's the Hopefully. thing is that I'm hoping that the writers go because to me, like I said. Everybody's not going to have to be kumbaya, and that's expected because you have the Newmans, the Chancellors, the Hamilton Winters, 
You know, you do have, you know, the Abbots. You have, you have four families, to be honest. Everybody has been friends who has some kind of friendship. I mean, Victor has always respected Devon because, of, you know, not only just because of the Neil factor, but because Devon is his own man. So now it's like, okay, what's going to happen when, you know, Victor finds out that Devon, you know, wants to do this? Think about Jill. Jill's going yeah. to have a thick, you know, a hand in the stick. I mean, you you know, besides Abby, Chance, and Devon, it goes to the Ashleys. You know, Jackie's probably going to be part of, you know, like, again, the whole Abbott, the Chancellors, Hamilton, Winston. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then you guys think about how this will trickle to other people that's in their orbit. You know, Billy and, Dev- Billy and Lily. You know? You got add you know, like how does Amanda stay and like it if this is to be an umbrella storyline that's going to affase all the characters on that show, then go for it. Yeah. Bring but it, don't uh, be like Yeah. Think about this is what I always say. Think about what William J. Bell would do. Bring as much because we haven't had much drama. No, we what haven't. Is it? I think I think everybody's been like happy. No, everybody's been bored. That and a lot of stuff happens off screen, so that really messes up the exactly. story. Exactly. Oh yeah. I mean, I need something to pop off like now. Like first and foremost, the so, because the thing was the the letdown was Billy telling Adam everything that he was doing, faking being drunk and stuff. I'm like, what the? That heck? was a letdown. Like, I I sort of that's I think that was one of the parts I liked. Finally, I mean he's stepping up. Although we wanted Billy no, to I, win this one. I wanted Billy. To, I wanted Adam to get gaslighted, just like Adam has gaslighted a lot of people over the years. I wanted Billy to like continue to, like, fake Adam out to the point where Adam does a public exposure of Billy. Only you wanted Billy it all the say, way. Right, because I feel as though if you're going to try to be, like, if you're going to try to outsmart me, go for it. Do your worst. Do your best. Like, put it all out there. But at the end of the day, ha-ha, guess what? But at the same time, I wanted some, you know, like everybody said, there's some stuff that Billy's, that people need to know about Billy that I, that Adam could have done, could have brought up, too. And he hasn't. Nope. And you had the perfect vehicle, you had a perfect storyline to do that. So. Hey, man, moving Don't on. Don't forget. And Don't forget, Adam knows about Billy and um. Oh, what's her name? Um, Billy and Summer. Summer. Because can back I tell you when how? Kyle was sad and depressed, he opened up to to um Adam, and they uh they have that small little moment about like poor little me, because of what happened between Billy and Summer. So yeah, Adam, if he really oh. wanted to, he could get Billy good with that. But, Adam but knows that part. Out. I don't think so. Lily knows that part. Lily knows. Phyllis knows. Yeah, Phyllis, Phyllis and Lily knows. Because this is why I kept saying, like, to me, now, if Adam found out, it would have been via through Phyllis. But they, but to me, it, I, and I say this to a lot of people, I have let go of all hope that that story, that that's going to ever come out, like, to to everybody. But that's why I said, like, Adam could have done it. Yeah. So That goes back to what he you're saying, have. Candace, that we're not getting the drama. It's either drop right. stories or it's either off screen. So it's like, what do we expect now? Like, I was shocked that they had Adam and Chance have a scene together, because I totally forgot about their relationship, their friendship that happened off screen in Vegas. Yeah. I did, too, I'm momentarily. Still thinking. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, they're friends. 
So How about that? But speaking of a show that's giving us the drama, let's talk about Days of Our Lives, shall we? Okay. Okay, on that one, I am loving Johnny being the devil. I'm having so much fun with it. That took me totally by surprise. I didn't expect it. Let me tell you something. That's that's what I'm saying. When people was like saying, I'm going to miss you, devil, and all that, I'm like, y'all really thought and really think the devil was gone. I'm like... Come on now, like, the devil still has unfinished business to do. Yeah, especially since we found out it ends in February, sweet, so there's got to be more story to tell. Well, it wasn't even, it wasn't even that. It was just the fact that, okay, if you, if, if the wrap up was the whole kumbaya, we love you, Marlena, come back to us, flashbacks, flashbacks, and the devil's gone. There's still like four, actually five stories that were still untied, and they need to tie. They had to, to tie it up. It wasn't because of February. So, I mean, okay, I'm just gonna go there. Ben and Sierra, baby. Mm-hmm. Guess who told Ben to kind of create that child? The double. Yeah. Um, the fact that I think he's still because of the invested double, in that. Do I think the show's still invested in that? Um. I have theories yeah. about that, which many others had, have the same theories based off the scene we saw this week with Ben and Sierra and that sonogram. Um, the fact right. that um, because of the devil, Paulina's secret was outed right. um, about her being, you know, the fact that the devil... Uh, let me see what else. Because of Doug, poor Doug, the devil. Um, the whole, the whole Lucas Sammy thing. Which come on now, that was, the devil may not have put all you the stuff that in one. it, but that. Yes, I did. I, I kept saying Lucas, Lucas. I said, watch Lucas, and nobody was believe. I was like, okay. And then when it was Lucas, I was like, aha! I'm like, yeah, I gotta win. But no, like yeah, because he knew where to go. Right, it was like, sir, you got the GPS that quick. Like that, man. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the devil did something to Ava. I don't even know. But um, my thing is, is that okay? You, the next phase of the the devil storyline is to really do some more damage. And yeah, you picked the right person, Stefano Demera's grandchild. You picked the right one. Because mm. if anybody came close to the devil, it was Stefano Demur. Um, I'm gonna say Pretty this: much. Carson Boltman, Carson Boltman is doing an excellent job uh, with this. I know, you know, yes, again, he is. social media, yes. you know, a, a lot of people are saying jacket. to me, "Look, when he said here's Johnny, I had two, I had two things, and I said this on Twitter. I said, all right, either I said, okay, who came up with that? Because I had this joke." Of him saying, "Here's Johnny," because his first name is Carson. Get it, Johnny Carson. Yeah. Get, okay. I'll, yep. I'll be here all night. And two, obviously, because that is one of the iconic moments. If y'all have never seen that movie, you need to see it. It's like, "Here's Johnny." I'm like, okay. I like the fact that Ooh, it fades yeah, in. Char- yeah, that it fades in Chanel and Allie because here's the thing. And this is why I said earlier about you know using them to the point of normalness. I love the triangle of Chanel, Allie, and Johnny. It does remind me of another show that kind of dropped the ball a little bit, but I'm not going to press. I love this. When I say I like this triangle, I like it because it's very organic. You notice I left somebody out. I'll get to him in a minute. Rip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll get you give me a minute. I will say that what is very interesting is is that when Johnny comes out of all of this, he's going to feel a certain type of way. Because when he told Chanel, I don't want to be married to you anymore, I was like, Oh, that. I was like, I'm gone. Bye. 
I said, good night, everybody. See ya. I was like, good night. first and foremost, you ain't going to do that. Holy moly. Right. I, didn't I felt so bad for either. Chanel. I felt bad for Chanel because Chanel, look, she, been, she was with Xander. Um, who else she was with? She had, she had Theo. Allie. She had Theo. Now she had, I'm like, this girl is my favorite. I actually said she was my favorite character of last year. Like, seriously, that girl came in non-apologetic about herself, and she, I love her. So, to me, I feel bad for her, but I'm also going to say she's also on my scorecard because right before all of this happened, Johnny and her made love. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to speculate, but I'm going to speculate. We got a baby Maybe. Coming. Okay. So if, if y'all keep a score at home, that would be her, Sierra, and another because it comes in three. Can you guess who the other third person is? Another baby, you're saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I heard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard, I heard what Johnny's planning to do. It's gonna be fun. Did you want me to? Did you want me to hint it, or you you you, you gonna you wait? Can't hint it. Go ahead, because I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm totally okay. out okay. of the loop I keep here. hearing, I keep hearing that Johnny is gonna be getting, um, how do you say, getting closer with Gabby. Oh, that wasn't what the, that wasn't one of it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That wasn't the one. Again, no. Okay, think about this. Before the devil left Marlena, what did Marlena? What did devil? What did Mar Devil do? To Bell and Sean. Oh, with Sh- oh, with Jan. She did mm-hmm. the same Jan, you she think Jan's her. the one that's going to be pregnant? Right. So it's like you got Ben and Sierra, Jan Spears question mark, but she's on my scorecard, and Chanel. Do you smell that, Will? Oh David, God. You smell that? You smell that? I it's smell burning. a baby switch. I smell a baby switch. Can yeah, I it? yeah, it's I like can smell it. Yeah, it smells. It smells like that time of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like it's gonna be like which I shell is the smell. baby under? It's like because here's the thing. Here's here's here was how me like and some others um, figured out. Ben and Sierra this week has been going back and forth with finding out if the baby is a boy or a girl. Like most parents nowadays, they they don't want to know. They want to know, you know. They told Sean that the child will have their own pronouns. See, this is how hip days was going this mm-hmm. this, this week. Their parent, they're paying their um, nursery. First of all, where you putting that nursery at, Ben and Sierra? Y'all literally are in a studio. Nothing wrong with a studio, but y'all have a baby on the way. Shouldn't y'all be looking for a house? I'm just, yeah, they I was just asking for, right? anyway, so they're going to paint it neutral. Okay, so we got, so they're going to be that kind, those kind of parents, right? They told Sean to not open it, to guard it with their lives. So that means that nobody's going to know what that baby is, if it's going to be a boy or a girl. Okay, again, the devil and Chanel made love, or as, mm-hmm. or as the older people used to say. Over and over whoopies. again. Over and over again. I mean, I don't know. Like, come on now. Should they have been on Peacock? I don't know. But that's how many times they were making love. Then you got Jan Spears, right? Okay, that's the wild card. Somebody's baby's going to get swapped. And here's the thing. If Days does it, I know what y'all going to say. Y'all going to be like, Candace, you have a problem with masks. What about baby switch storylines? Yeah, I am going to have a problem. But at least this is giving me some kind of drama. I don't know. Like I have a, I, I feel as though because again, the devil, the the okay, the devil's agenda is to tear happy couples apart, and it's right. a sacri- it's a war between love or going against against all odds against love and all that stuff. So when Ben and Sierra was like, yeah, we even fought the devil and stuff like that, okay, you also got the factor of if Jan is pregnant, is pregnant what is Sean going to do? It's going to wage a, not a war between Bell and Sean, but that power struggle of who, like, the most important factor in my life is a child or Bell. 
I don't know. Like, I'm just going there, okay? So if they do a baby swap storyline, like I said, I know that's a trope in days, but at yeah. least this one would actually be more no offense to the to Christine, you know, the, you know, Kristen DeMira and all that storyline stuff. I wasn't really much invested as if I would for this one, okay? And with that being said, uh, Lindsay Goffrey's coming back to Dave. Mm-hmm. Yay. Yay. I'm, I'm, ha- but, I'm, I'm glad that somebody finally asked him where Sarah is. I have theories about that, too. But no, I'm going gonna, gonna to stick to that. Because I, I need know to Lindsay is coming back, but is it going to be Sarah? That's what I've been saying. Or is it going to be a mask? Were we there? Were we talking about that in the Twitter spaces? Yeah. I mean, is it oh, again? These are certain stories that it has to be addressed. The fact that Rex told Xander, "I was not with Sarah. Sarah dumped me." So all this time, now everybody is being woke. That where the heck is Sarah at? So it's going to be interesting to see where she is or if she is there. Or if Gwen has something to do with that. Yeah. And you know what? I'm surprised Hmm? Xander didn't pick up the clue when, when he told, when Rex told him that Kristen was impersonating Kate. Because I don't think, remember with how Xander, okay, got to remember all this, is is kind of new to Xander. The fact that Xander believed that, again, he finally got the girl. Everything was fine. Right. And then next thing you know, it wasn't fine. And for a year almost, he's been, you know, he slept with Nicole. He tried to blackmail Nicole. He got beat up. Mm-hmm. He was with Chanel. See, this is why she was my character of the year. Um, and he's gone back and forth. Like, and then he has Gwen. I'm sorry. Better, I'm sorry. So for a whole year, he's been kind of beating himself up, but he's also started to move on because he believed this was happening, that Sarah was living her best life with Rex. And then all of a sudden, here's Rex, and here's come shocking news that for a whole year, Sarah has not been with Rex. That he, she, he doesn't know where she is. No. So yeah. He's in the dark. Right, and so is Maggie. And I have an issue with that. How do you not keep up with? Your, like, I understand you were, you know, you were grieving over your other child, but you didn't make any, you know. You know, tries to like maybe see your daughter. Like, yeah, they don't. No, they, yeah, that was. That yeah, was it was. Piece. It was sort of. That was a bad dropped piece. and faded out. And... Because you know, because you know, Maggie is not that kind of parent. Right. Especially if quote unquote she someone was dying. To see more to... of her. Well, not only that, but the fact that okay. <sighs> The fact that Summer was dying, quote unquote, of an illness. Mm-hmm. Sarah's a doctor. Sarah's a doctor. I'm gonna leave it at that. But you had no yeah. chance to see your child. Okay. All right. So my theory is, and I'm gonna say it again, Sarah's been on that island. Yeah, she's still on the island. And they faked her out. The same way people fake Xander, Megan, them out. My belief is is that somebody had told poor Sarah, who is either been drugged, and like when I say drug, meaning like her mental state is kind of everywhere. She was drugged. Yeah, I saw her. She was or, loopy. Yeah, and I believe that they probably told her that Xander doesn't want to see her again. And actually made a video of or or something to make it sound like it was really him saying this to her, or Maggie, or Rex, to make her feel as though they don't want anything to do with her. To make her feel as though, like I don't know, 
But on the flip side, like I said, you have, you know, Rex, who was kind of technically with the last Sarah. You right. have, you know, Xander believing that, you know, again, you know, what he saw and all that stuff. And then you have Maggie. So it's a big dupe. But Sarah was the one who who had to face the reality. Nobody wanted her. Nobody came to see her. Nobody tried to find her. And now all of a sudden. So. All of a sudden. I'm curious mm-hmm. when her return, when she does return, I'm curious if maybe she's been brainwashed a little bit, like what you're saying. Maybe something happened to her mentally. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to say it right now. I think either Gwen or somebody is going to wear a, a, a Sarah mask. That's hmm. what I think. Ava? No. It has to be Gwen. It would probably be Gwen. Gwen will probably get in touch with Kristen or somebody will find a mask. You know, Gwen will find a mask. Because Gwen knows that if Xander finds Sarah, it's over for her and him. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys are hearing all of yeah. my stuff on Take Two Radio. I'm telling you, I've been coming up with so much stuff, it's not even funny. I, love I need to break more soap. You do. So, I do. <laughs> By the way, Four Having a Day comes out February 7th. Just wanted to let everybody know. Um, so, uh, yes. Yeah. But then you have Marlena. Now, let me, let me, let me address this. Marlena, yeah. who just been. Exercise. Back into society. It's, it's, no, I'm going to say release back into society after a 14 hour stint at the mental ward, I'm believing. She comes back home and she has to do the apology tour. Okay. And I have a problem. You have a problem because maybe she should pay for some of it. Yeah. If not all of it. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. I don't believe in this being nice and tidy. I think she needs to pay consequences for her actions. I'm like, so everybody's kumbaya with her too? Like, Well, maybe not Paulina because she didn't go over to the party. Okay. And so remember, Paulina? A did say, which was kind of funny, A did say this past mm-hmm. week, he said, that the devil did him a favor by not having them get married to Paulina. Yeah. I'm just going to say, okay, with Paulina, to be honest, I want Paulina to never forget, forgive Marlena. I want Marlena to understand that regardless of you being a devil or not, you violated the patient doctor code. Like, I'm sorry. Like, better Sierra to me. Like, Sierra, if I was Sierra, to be honest, I'd be like this, son. She cannot come near me. She cannot come in our home. I, you know, and look, I love Marlena, too. I've known her since I was a little girl. But I'm sorry. Like, I, after what happened, no, mm-mm, no. And what she did to my grandparents, no, mm-mm. You even talked to her outside? Or meet at but Brady's pub, but ain't she ain't coming near me. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Hmm. That's, That's what we need cool. to have. We need to have the aftermath of what's going on after this devil story. Doug, Julie and Doug needs to say something. Like more so, Julie up to Marlena. Like Marlena, like to me. Okay, look, it hurts when the person that is so sweet and everything. But I'm sorry, Marlena has a history. One, she's been possessed by the devil more than once. Two, she was the Salem, Salem killer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm sorry, Marlena. You may be a great therapist, but so is Google. Um, so is Surrey and Alexis, you know. Yep. Um, so I'm just saying. To me, like, everybody should not be so, 
gun ho like be like, Oh, we understand, like, oh, but everything's okay now, right? Yeah. Nonchalant. Nonchalant. Yeah. Right. They now I will be. say that they wh- should have a now, reason I- to hate her, like Paulina. Give her a right. reason, like what you're saying. Like to Let me, have Dub should, like Julie, Julie and Dub should have some ill fate to, towards Marlena too. But I'm gonna say one of the funniest lines, though, one of the funniest things that happened was when Kayla found out she kissed Mar Double. Yeah. I don't know oh my who God, wrote yeah. that, but seriously, this is like one of those things where you have like a fandom moment here because when. Ma Devil says, now I understand what, the sweetness about you. And I'm just like, okay, should I actually be creeped out by that or should I just actually have enjoyed it the way that I did? Because I'm like, okay, Kit, like, I understand mm-hmm. that you thought that was. But, again, Kayla should have some issues too. But speaking of Kayla, she's not the only doctor in town, allegedly. I mean, yeah, nope. Sarah's MIA. I don't know what the other She's the only are. present one. Well, well, remember, no, you got to give true. Kayla, you got to give Kayla a little credit. Oh, you got you Remember that last dinner, the last dinner they just had, it was kind of funny when Kayla was looking at Patch, and she, and Patch goes, it's okay, sweetness, it's me, it's not the devil. And she looked at him just to double make sure that it's not Right, I mean, like, you need to have them. those kind of moments. Like, you wouldn't have to have those kind of moments where Marlena, like, if Marlena's, like, throwing something or she gets mad, you just kind of got to take a step back and, and say, are you okay? Like, are you really okay? You know, like, Susan, are you okay? Like, she threw holy water and everything. But the thing is, okay, so I guess this is only insult that after three months, six months, you are officially a doctor. All that medical school training, No. Just go on the soap. You'll be a doctor. So Dr. Tripp is his name, and Heartbreak is his game. There you go. Mm Because he's about to get heartbroken. Do we have time for B&B? Oh. Oh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just short and sweet. But let me just say this about Dave. Dave is going full blast with Chanel and Al. And like I said, they made love. Paulina, of all people, Paulina walked in on the afterglow. I was like, you saw trip, see, I now, thought Trip was going to see it. I'm going to be honest. I don't know who I wanted to walk in on them. Like, trip I really don't soon. know who I, <laughs> True. I could also say I was going to say Johnny as jo- as the devil, and kind of just like use that to blackmail them or blackmail Allie or something like that. I don't know. Or to send it to Trip. That actually would have been money. That would have been. Not, I want to say funny, but that would have been good too. If 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 Mar if since Johnny is so gun ho about this movie that he he did some like a recording of of Chanel and Allie and sent it to Trip. Oh, oh, that would be this awful. Is going, this is going to actually no. I'm going to tell you something. All right, days. I'm just going to throw this out there. First and foremost, again, congratulations on you, GH and Young and the Rockless WGA Award. Here's the thing. I would have. <sighs> At the premiere of the movie, whenever it happens, I need kind of a re repeat, a remix of when at what's called his wedding, we saw Eric and Kristen, you know, doing the deed because Marlena played it by accident, allegedly. I need for some. I don't want the outing of Chanel and Ellie to happen that way, but I don't know. Like I don't know. Like I because I do feel as though. I feel as though Days is going to have to do something because in the next couple of weeks, because they're going to be taking off two weeks for the Winter Olympic break. For the winter. So they're going to have to do, they're going to do something explosive. And I'm wondering if, if somebody is going to show Allie and Chanel or the devil is going to do something else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But let's hop over to Bone and Beautiful real quick because um, Paris is my. I didn't see today, so. Uh, I didn't see much see. of today no. either. 
You didn't see today's either? I didn't see I didn't see today's. I didn't see today's either. Oh my god. Right. That's fine. That's, That's three okay. for three. Well, I was, I was, That's well, fine. I was at work, so I I guess, I guess that. here's the thing. So let's let's just keep everybody at speed here. So as I heard about today's, but um so we do have uh Grace uh Paris' like mom. I like her too, but Okay. So just He's not liking this, Carter too much. No, he no, and and you know what, Carter. Okay, look. First and foremost, Carter, you're doing too much. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you this right now. You just got over being heartbroken by Quinn. What are we doing with Paris? Nothing. Mm. But what are we doing with Paris? I'm not feeling Paris and Carter. I'm like real, like at Paris, you. Of all people, rip not you Zen, mm. and then Zenday. I need to know something. What happened with you and Nicole? Because I need more clarification on this. Because you're too, you you're you're just like your family's surname forces. You like to get married a lot. So I need to know what's going on with you and Nicole. What what happened? Who did what? Who did who? Who what? That ha, Carter. I need for you to sit down a little bit. And just, like, do your work. Yeah. He's been a little busy. He's been too busy. And I'm happy for him being busy, but I need for him to be unbusy for a minute. Just saying. Just, you know, point that out there. Um, Let's see. Brooke, I know you feel guilty about what you allegedly think you did after the kiss. Don't so on I, I, I need for, I need for Bo to get to deliver because I need for Sheila. Like Sheila's enjoying herself. First and foremost, okay, Taylor Hayes, girl, we need to talk now. I know. First and foremost, you got your office. You're taking on patients, yeah. and Sheila is one of them. This can work in two favors. Yours. And Sheila, yours is because if Sheila tells you anything, yes, yeah, that patient confidential thing. But at this point, this is the same woman who shot you and killed you. Mm-hmm. Only yourself can you. Only I, can I you like say her that. though that she's not. She she's tough and she's not acting fearful. Of I her. need Taylor to be plotting. I need to hashtag Taylor be better be plotting. Because to me, yes, she's being very reasonable and all this stuff, but I need for Taylor to be secretly plotting for her revenge. Like, not everybody has to be so kumbaya. Like, all right, again, the fact that she's, that okay, the fact that she is, you know, doing the same thing she's been doing over and over again, kind of playing both sides of the fence. She's there listening to everybody ranting about Brooke. Da 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 da. Brooke this. This is why Daddy's not happy. Da 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 da. da. Brooke this. Brooke that. Da 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 da. Okay. After thirty something years, we get it. Brooke has done something. But at the same time, Taylor has been away, and she's missed yeah. certain things, and it all goes back to Sheila. Okay. There, and then right. It also goes back to kind of the mistreatment of Ridge because of the back and forth thing. To me, if I was Taylor, I would be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to be here for my kids, and I understand them, but at the same time, I have to do me and be me. I need to da 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 Like, because nobody would think that Taylor would be plotting, especially this. Like, okay, she, okay if Sheila tells her everything, and whatnot. Taylor has two ways to go. She can use it for her advantage to get back with Ridge, or she can actually be like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing this to her. I'm not doing this to Brooke. Is Sheila, is Sheila plotting to get Taylor Brooke, and Ridge take, together? Yeah, she's trying, because remember her, her whole thing is, is that, okay, she's trying to eliminate Brooke. So if she's, like, chummy with Taylor, it's another end to getting to see her grandkid. Right. And to get closer to her, you know, her dad. 
And can you imagine if Sheila got to be the hero that was able to, like, you know, get Taylor and Ridge back together? Sheila would be so happy. Like, Stephanie would be like, oh, thank you, Sheila. Like, oh, you think you're welcome to the family income. So she thinks. I don't know. Exactly. You, it's all, and Sheila so. said, I wouldn't regardless. I mean. Right. But that's Sheila's so. thinking. Oh, well, what I like Sheila about Sheila, and this is crazy, Sheila. I like that even though, like, even though if she does get what she wants, which is to get Ridge and um, Ridge and Taylor to get reunited, it's Sheila Carter we're talking about. This woman always wants more, so there's going to be more that she's going to want. Mhm. So, but I mean, like I said, you know, right now, Bold and Beautiful is kind of going. They're kind of going at a pace that we're normal. That we're we're like it's it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. So many pieces trying to figure out how they're connecting, but we're watching. Mhm. <laughs> so, um, speaking and of Bold like, and Beautiful, and like your friend Carrie says. Yeah. Like your friend Carrie says about Wyatt and Flo and Bill. It says what would we say would we say, um, outside activities. Oh yeah. That was our project. <laughs> I mean here's the thing and I'm and, and okay, like Bowling Beautiful is a thirty minute show, it's really twenty like twenty three minutes, give or take out the commercials. And yeah, it's like they're 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 rotating stories between, you know, certain characters. Yeah, seeing, you know, Don Diamant you know, this past week, that was great. We know that Darian Brooks is, do- is actually doing outside projects. He's actually doing voiceover work for Disney Disney Plus. Um, and, you know, uh, Katrina, I know she was doing a movie. She was filming a movie. I don't know if she stopped filming or not. But, you know, it's, it is kind of one of And we know why Renee is not, Ren is not there, because I think this was around the time she went overseas to judge the Miss Universe pageant. So we got a lot going on. But, with that being said, before we um, end up, today is ten, it marks 10 years of One Life to Live finale on ABC. We all yes. agree with this. One Life to Live should still be on the air. Um, everybody's been posting yep. their favorite moments of One Life to Live using hashtag One Life to Live. Uh, it is actually currently right. number six trending right now on social media. So share your thoughts about, young, um, about One Life to Live, the good, the bad, the favorite couples, characters, villains. Also, on the 17th, Monday, this is important, Bold and Beautiful announced that they're going to dedicate that episode to Betty White, who would have turned 100 years old on Monday. Betty White the episode on the 17th. Right. Right? She, yes. Um, Betty White played Ann Douglas, who was Stephanie, and Pam's mom was Stephanie's grandmother and all that. She should have won an Emmy, just saying. For that role, so they're going to do that. Um, but yeah, that's the thought. It's I'm nothing else. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. Hey, thank <laughs> thank you guys for being a part of it tonight. Not a Did problem. You have a good Thanks time? for having us. Yeah, it's, you, it's great to be back. Uh huh. See you guys in two weeks. Yep. All right. See you on back in two weeks. See ya. Bye. Good Bye. Night. See you soon. Good night, everybody. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadio.com.